Hey, you guys. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. How is everyone doing? How is everyone doing? So today I want to have a discussion about social skills when it comes to networking in the industry. And this idea that I got for this topic today was inspired by a post that I actually saw on LinkedIn earlier, and it was by a literary manager named Audrey Knox that I follow on LinkedIn, and she always has amazing insights about not just the writing and not just about the business side, but how to really genuinely and authentically connect with people in a non-creepy way. And the post that she had mentioned was about how this didn't happen to her, but it happened to a colleague of hers who got a submission from a screenwriter, right? Like that sounds harmless, but here's what happened. This screenwriter sent this to the person's home, looked up their address and just sent them their creative material. And there are so many things wrong with that. There are so many reasons why you should not do that. And I do also want to acknowledge that it is a competitive industry. It is an industry where you do have to have determination, but that's not the way to do it. And today I want to talk about some strategies and some ways that you can really get your stuff out there and you can meet the right people and you can avoid coming off or coming across as a creepy individual or a person that does not understand social cues. So before we get started, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Jessica Tanner, and I am a screenwriting and personal development coach. I don't just teach you generic writing tips. I don't just teach you how to master the business side of the industry. I also teach you social cues, social skills, what to do when you're querying your projects to producers, agents, managers, the right way and the wrong way to to query. And I know that as screenwriters, we hear this a lot, but less is more. Less really is more. And a lot of people don't think it is. But the way that I teach screenwriters to really thrive in the industry is through my four month signature program, the Script Mentorship Program. And in that program, you will not only get access to me directly for four months, you will also be able to get group access to a community of like minded writers. And you will also get exclusive access to my database of industry contacts. So I'm talking literary agents, managers, film financers, producers, people that can help you design your pitch deck and more. So if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, <coughs> make sure that you click the link on my page and you'll be able to apply to the script mentorship program. All right, so today we're going to talk about how not to appear socially awkward when you're, you know, querying to producers, agents, managers. And I want to start off by saying under no circumstances should you ever query your screenplay in this manner. Do not look up somebody's address and you know, think that that's the best way to contact them, especially when they don't know you from Adam. Like they don't know you from a can of paint. You are a stranger to them. And this is where understanding social cues come in. And too many writers think like, all I have to know is how to write. All I need to know is how to be creative. 
It doesn't work that way. You still have to know how to deal with people. You still have to know, okay, is this considered like crossing a boundary? Is this considered, okay, weird? Is that going to put that person off? And I'm not saying like just people please, but you know, you have to really use common sense at this point and think about, okay, I'm looking up this person's home address. They don't know me. This is not going to end well, right? And I said in my TikTok video that I did a while ago, um, a few hours ago, that you might think that, oh, they're going to think that I really have the determination. No, they're going to look at you for one, like you're desperate. And then I I'm just going to say it that way. They're going to think that something is mentally wrong with you. They might think that you're unhinged because think about it. They don't know if you are a stalker. And remember, these are people too that you're reaching out to. Too often, we think of people in the industry as, oh my gosh, industry gatekeepers and industry contacts. Yes, they are contacts, but they are people too with their own need for privacy, with families, with children, with family members that probably live with them. Like, you have to really think about stuff before you do it. And I'm not saying overthink. I'm saying keep it simple. Less is more. A simple email querying about your screenplay would have sufficed. Like, you don't need to do all that. And too many people, they get discouraged. They're like, I'm sick of sending all these emails. I'm tired of, you know, reaching out to people. And they're saying, well, we're not really looking for that type of thing right now. You know, maybe like down the road, you're tired of the rejection. I get it. We're human. But sending something to somebody's home that you don't even know is like beyond the realm of normal. And the problem with doing that is think about how that's going to be received. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, the industry isn't as big as you think it is. And by big, I mean size wise. People know each other. People talk. People trade stories with each other. They trade experiences. And you don't want to be that person that they're talking about in a room that you're not in. And they are saying to you, well, not, not to you, but they're saying to whoever they're cool with in the industry, yeah, you know, this person named, you know, such and such, they actually found my home address and sent that to me. I had to file a restraining order because, you know, like, how did they even get my address? Oh, what was the name of that writer who sent that to you just so I know to look out for them and, you know, not to really take them seriously? See, that can happen, and not because you don't have the talent, but because people are freaked out by you, and, and you don't want that, because then that messes up your chances, and you don't know who they know. You don't know what decision maker they are friends with. You don't know what gatekeeper they came up in the industry with, and so now you're sending it to a whole new person. You might actually email this person and do it the right way, but you don't know that they know the person that you mailed your stuff to, to their address. And so now they're like, oh my gosh, this is the person that my friend was telling me. This is the person that my friend was telling me about. Oh my gosh, like this is the person that, sent something to the address. They might be unhinged. They might be crazy. Oh my gosh, what if they're a stalker? Like, you don't want that. And this is why I always tell you guys, make sure that you are renewing your mind each day. Make sure that you are rejuvenating your mind. And I don't just say that to sound cute. I don't just say that because, oh, it sounds insightful. No. When you renew and rejuvenate your mind each day, it keeps you from doing stuff like that. 
it keeps you from making a rash decision like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and I don't know this person and I'm going to go ahead and send them my script, but I'm not going to email them. I'm going to take it up a notch. I'm going to look up their home address where they lay their head at night and I am going to send them my screenplay or my novel or whatever literary work. Don't do that. And this is why I tell you guys, you have to have the mental fortitude. You have to have the mental strength to make it in an industry where rejection is the norm and you can't let your discouraged, you know, mood cause you to do stuff like this because then it'll mess you up down the road and you don't know who these people know. I cannot stress that enough. And the other thing too, that this type of behavior comes from, people simply have gotten away from wanting to network, from wanting to talk to people. And some of it is because of social media, but a lot of it, we just live in a society where a lot of people are, for lack of a better phrase, socially awkward. And they are so socially awkward that they really don't know that this isn't even the right move. Because most people, and I'm being generous when I say that, I like to think that most people would know, okay, that's inappropriate for me to look up somebody's address and send them a screenplay when they don't know me from a can of paint. They don't know who I am. They don't know like anything about me. And then I could possibly end up with a restraining order, right? Like that kind of thing. Like you really have to be smart when it comes to knowing what move to make, especially when you're getting your stuff out there. And I know a lot of you don't want to hear this, but emailing is so much better. I would rather you say, Jessica, I sent them some emails, but they never got back to me. I would rather you do that than send it to somebody's home. Because if you do that and you're in my program and you tell me you did that, I'm going to say, why did you do that? And you might be like, well, you know, I didn't. No, no, no. That That's socially awkward. That is going to mess up your name in the industry before you even get started. That is going to mess up your reputation. And reputation is everything in the industry. And when you send out emails, some other mistakes that I see writers make is that on the first inquiry, right, they will send the entire script to the producer, the agent, or the manager, and you don't do that. Send them a simple log line. That's it. That's all you need. And then if they want to read the script, they request it. And I know a lot of people struggle with patience. I know that. But that's how it goes. And too many screenwriters have either gotten no response or a flat out no because they did that. Because they just sent the entire project. They didn't see like, okay, are they intrigued by the log line? Does the log line make them want to read it? Are they curious about it? Because if you're just sending them the entire script, I say this all the time as somebody that used to work in a literary agency, in an acting agency, and in a production company. These people are busy. And I'm not just saying that. They are busy. I'm talking like screenplays stacked up to the ceiling type of busy that they have to read. And then... If you're dealing with a literary agent or a literary manager and you're about to, you know, query them, you have to remember they also have current clients on their roster. So they are going to make those clients their first priority. And, you know, you might be like, well, that's not fair. No, it's business. Because here's the thing, too. 
they need to focus on what's going to give them ROI. Because remember, I always say agents and managers make money when you make money. When you make money, they get a percentage. And so it would behoove them from a business standpoint to really prioritize the clients on their roster that are giving them an ROI, return on investment. And if you're new and you're not even on their roster, not saying they'll never get to you, but you're not going to be first in line. And that's true. Now, if they see your email and then they're like, oh, okay, this log line is well written. Like, okay, I'm intrigued. Okay, they'll read it, but don't expect them to get back to you like right away, right away, because it doesn't work like that. A lot of these people, I have to reiterate that they are so busy to the point to where, you know, I've known people that, you know, they've gotten emails in June and they didn't reply back to the person in December because they had so much going on and on the back end. And that wasn't like, personal. It was literally like, okay, I have all these projects. I have all these clients I'm managing. Okay, let me get back to this person. Okay, let me finally get back to this email. And that's really how it goes. So, you know, the main thing that you need to focus on in the early stages when you are writing a screenplay is to manage your craft, hone and develop your craft. And a lot of people don't like to hear that. They just want the result. But screenwriting is a process. And that's why I always talk about personal development work as well. Because you have to have patience. You have to have mental resilience. And too many people are, you know, they want it just right now. They want what they want and they want it now. And here's the thing. They want the result, but they don't want the process. They run away from the process. And I actually saw a quote last night. Um, It was really about business owners, but you could also apply it to screenwriting, to your creative endeavor, whatever it is. And the quote was that people don't have the patience to, like, spend three years developing their own company or their own craft, but they have the patience to work for somebody else and be under their thumb for 40 years. And I was like, I almost screamed when I saw that post. I almost screamed because I was like, that's so true. A lot of people do not have the patience, do not have the mental resilience They don't to focus on their craft, to go through process because they're like, no, it takes all this time and I just want the result. I want it quick, fast and in a hurry. It doesn't work like that. That's why I tell people when they apply to my four month program, I tell them, listen, if you are just looking at screenwriting as a get rich quick thing, It's not it. I don't even want you in my program because I don't want somebody in there that doesn't see the point in outlining, in revising, in rewriting, in structuring your story, in the development work. And that is what you have to do. And a lot of people run from that they just want you know the recognition like oh I won this competition I got into this fellowship I got an agent I got a manager I got my script sold I got it optioned those are all great goals and they are attainable but you have to go through a process it doesn't just happen overnight with you putting in minimal effort It doesn't just happen overnight with you just saying, oh, well, I'll just throw, you know, spaghetti at the wall and see what stays or what sticks. It doesn't work that way. And what you have to really get a handle on is having that mental resilience to get through adversity, to get through the no, to get through 
you know, a sale not coming through, to get through your pitch being rejected. You have to get through all that stuff and still show up and still reach out. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, this person told me no. Okay, yeah, person A told you no, but that doesn't mean that person B is going to tell you no. That doesn't mean person C, D, E, F, G are going to tell you no. And besides that, you haven't even gone to ask them in the proper manner. You haven't even, you know, taken that chance. And you're just assuming, well, that person said no, so the whole world is going to reject me. Not true. Not true at all. And let me even read... Um, the post that I was talking to you guys about earlier on LinkedIn about how this person really sent their screenplay to somebody's home. Like, looked up their address and everything. And the reason I keep harping on this is because I don't want anyone making that type of mistake. I don't want anyone making that kind of you know, decision because they're just frustrated with not hearing from anyone. And that's where that comes from. That comes from somebody who, you know, you've been reaching out to people, you've been doing all the things. And now you're like, well, what can I do? What's a surefire way to get their attention? I'm going to send it to their home. You got their attention, but not in a good way. And not all attention is good. Can we say that? Can we normalize that? Not all attention is good attention because now you have attention, but for the wrong reason, because you freaked them out. And let me see. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. And I have to do a shout out because it's not my post. I always want to make sure I credit people. This is from literary manager Audrey Knox. She is a literary manager to film and TV writers. And she's on LinkedIn. She has amazing information and insight. She's awesome. So this is what she said on her LinkedIn post. Quick PSA that I didn't think I needed to say, but apparently I do. I understand that as screenwriters, it's hard to get noticed. You might be tempted to do whatever you can to stand out and get attention. But don't look up someone's home address and send any creative materials via mail to their house. It will have the opposite effect. Let me say that again. It will have the opposite effect. Instead of being impressed by your initiative, they will be creeped out and never want to talk to you again. You can Google their office address if you really want to go above and beyond. But really, in this day and age, Please do all your outreach by email. Professional boundaries are important for a reason. Social cues, social skills. And a lot of people have gotten away from that. Like, we have gotten so desensitized due to social media that people almost like, it's like they don't even know what is in the realm of normal and abnormal anymore. And, you know, she also said in her post, this did not happen to me. It's a story from a friend, but don't do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure her friend was creeped out. Like, how did you even get my address? Like, how do you even know where I live? Like, I would be creeped out by that. I would be like... Do I need to get a restraining order? And, you know, it's really just age-old advice. Don't be weird. Be normal. Talk to people like a human. Email them. Like, you're better off even DMing them on social media. Like, even that's better. And, like, let me read some of the comments in here, too. Because people don't... They don't seem to... Like, really understand. And when I read that, I was thinking in my head, like, 
it's a shame she even has to say this, but, you know, it's like, come on. Like, it's not that hard. And people don't really get that how you come across to people matters. And, you know, people also think that, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm showing initiative. I'm doing this. I'm showing grit. No, you're not. You're not showing grit. You're not. Oh, well, I'm just so tired of waiting. You're going to be waiting even longer if you keep on approaching people like that. And, you know, it's just, it, 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 it's really, it, it's creepy. And, and I love this comment right here. Creepy never wins. Just be cool and real. And when you believe in yourself and are kind and centered, centered mentally and emotionally, that confidence will always come through eventually and you will end up attracting the right kind of people who want to work with you and believe in you because of that. This industry is so strange sometimes. I didn't say that. I'm reading a comment. And yeah, like people really think, oh, I'm going to impress these people. And no, it's it's crazy. It is so crazy. It's invasive. And in a world where a lot of us are on social media, a lot of people are showing people their lives and stuff like that, there is something to be said for respecting people's boundaries, their privacy, and their autonomy. I mean, it, it's just, it's cringe. Like I see another comment, cringe. And, you know, it, it's just too much. It's, it's too much. Yeah, way, way, way too much. And personal boundaries, professional boundaries. And you have to balance ambition with respect for privacy. Because when you explore ways to engage creatively and professionally within appropriate channels, within different spaces, that can lead to meaningful connections. That can lead to people actually like, okay, let me let me give this person a chance. Let me see. Like, I've known them for a good little minute. Like, we've built a rapport. Like, let it unfold naturally. Let it unfold. Like, I'll even use myself as an example, right? Um, somebody that I connected with on LinkedIn, another writer, she invited me to join her weekly group. And they meet every Thursday. And tomorrow I'm going. It's through Zoom, but still, you know, community, get to know other people, get to know other writers, get to know different insights, perspectives, keep it normal. Like, don't be weird about it, right? And it's only natural. People will ask you, okay, what are you working on? Or, hey, how do you help writers? Or what do you do? Like, it'll come up. But let it be normal. Just, just keep it natural. And also, when you have a well-structured outreach, it protects your reputation and it fosters a more professional environment. And also right here, it, it's, it's like the equivalent of, let's say you have a crush on somebody, right? And they don't know you from a can of paint. And you like knock on their door and you tell them, hey, I've been watching you and I, I, want, I really want to go out with you. Think about how creeped out you'd be if somebody did that. Like think about how freaked out you'd be think about how off-putting it would be the same thing rings true when you send somebody that you don't know through the mail you send to their home address your screenplay and they don't know who you are it's it's crazy and you know now I'm sure that a lot of agents, a lot of managers, I'm sure a lot of them have this story. And this is why I used to work in a literary agency. I used to work in an acting agency. And they are very strict about who they let call. And when I first started working there, I was new. I was green. 
I had no idea like how strict they were. And they told me when they were training me, they were like, oh yeah, Jessica, you know, if this person isn't screened properly, do not send them through because some of these people are not, they're not like, they're not mentally there. And, you know, a lot of this too is a symptom of a deeper issue, mental health issues. I mean, it's just, it's like most people, I would hope, you know, I can't speak for everybody, but I would hope that most people would not do this. I would hope right? And I see a funny comment here. I hope they didn't hand deliver it for bonus points. Like that would be strange. And (laughs) um, somebody wrote, oh my God, don't give anyone ideas. And you know, we're saying, people are saying that in a joking manner, but I guarantee you there is somebody out there right now thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to send it to somebody's address and oh my gosh, like they're going to read it. They're going to be impressed with me. No, they're not. Like they are going to be turned off indefinitely. And I also want to make sure I say this too, because I've gotten these kind of DMs, but when you DM people, Talk to them like they are a human, please. You know, say who you are and then also, you know, let them know, hey, you know, I wanted to connect. You know, I see that we're both in screenwriting. I was wondering, you know, if we could, you know, share insight, blah, blah, blah. You know, something like that, something normal. Don't just pitch them on the first message and they don't know you. Like, I have had people that DM me and they are like, oh, can you read my script? You know, I've even had people email me their script before. And I let people know from the beginning, I'm a coach, I'm a screenwriting coach, but I don't just read material from people unless they are in my coaching program, unless they're doing a one-on-one session with me and both of those are open. So, you know, if you get in my DM saying, hey, can you read my script? First of all, here's the thing. I have to prioritize my clients, okay, that actually invested in my program. So that means I do not read scripts and give notes for free. My time is valuable. And the fact that I even have to explain this to people is crazy. But you'd be surprised some of the DMs that I have gotten over the years since I went into business doing this. And sometimes people... They will be like, oh, you know, I I really want you to read my script. I've been watching your content. Let me know, you know, what you think of it. And I reply back to them like, if you enroll in my program or if you book a session with me, I would be happy to read it. But, you know, just like out of the blue, no, it doesn't work like that. And you have to understand, like, you have to be able to read the room. And too many people don't know how to read the room. They don't know how to really, you know, look at a situation and think, okay, how should I respond to this person? What should I say to them? How should I reach out? Just just don't be weird, right? And and it just goes back to keeping it simple. Keep it normal. Keep it light. Okay. I cannot stress that enough. But anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for engaging with me in the live. And I also want to let everyone know that just came in. If you are a screenwriter and you're looking to grow when it comes to your writing, when it comes to navigating the business side, and when it comes to personal development, you know, cultivating elite habits with your time management, your productivity, how you eat, and how that can boost your creativity, your focus, your success overall, click the link on my page to apply for the script mentorship program and all 
also, if you are looking to get like one-on-one -on -one feedback, you're not quite ready for the script mentorship program yet, my one-on-one -on -one sessions are open. And for those, you will get two hours where I will go over your entire script with you. And at that point, you will leave with everything laid out. You will have a guide map. You will have a roadmap. So you go into the rewrite with confidence, with clarity, and most importantly, a strategy. So if that sounds like something that you need like yesterday, click the link on my page and you will be able to book that session with me. So thank you guys so much for watching. This video will be posted on YouTube probably by Saturday at the latest. So be on the lookout for that and I'll catch you again in the next video. Bye.